One of the last frontiers for the venturesome is Africa. The Africa of breathtaking Victoria Falls and the awesome beauty of the Murchison Cascade. Nowhere on earth is water so vital to the life cycle. Water means abundant game. And when brilliant flamingos dot the landscape, natives know that every species from two-ton hippos to four-ton elephants are in abundance. Water means big game grazing on the savanna as far as the eye can see. In Central Africa, there are a thousand varieties of gazelle, each species banding against their common enemy, the wild dog. Deservedly called the king of beasts, the lion lords over all other animals, while a mother lion has her paws full with a new family. There are times when gazelles will fight to the death over a female, and other times when the mood strikes them, it's joust in fun. With the dry season, life in Africa becomes a desperate battle for survival. Nomadic natives are better equipped through instinct and learning to find water as months go by without rain. But the animals are caught up in the whirling dust devils that plague every living creature. Lake beds are dried up, streams reduced to a trickle, and animals like the wildebeest paw futilely to find some life-giving moisture. As ponds and lakes dry, the level of rivers and streams fall, and fish by the thousands are stranded. Instinct brings butterflies from scores of miles to find soil dampened by some underground source. Not far from the parched savanna is the lush Ituri forest nestled in the shadow of the mountains of the moon. Here live the most famous tribe of pygmies, the Bambute. The tallest man is less than five feet, but they have a king-sized curiosity about everything, including the truck. The Bambute are a nomadic people and usually attach themselves to a tribe of normal-sized natives. They are specialists in plating vines into ropes so strong that they are used to support bridges. The women are the workers around the camp while the men spend their days hunting. A Bambute is fearless in tracking the most ferocious of beasts. Characteristic of the pygmy is his nose. Note that it has no bridge and how wide the nostrils flare. But all beauty is relative, and you'll find beauties primping in the strangest places. They use a mixture of banana peel ash and water for this treatment. And while the men may scoff, this is the kind of beauty that appeals to them. Boy meets girl, it's the universal story. The pygmies live in the shadow of the Ruwenzori Range, the fabled Mountains of the Moon, and two pygmy chieftains helped arrange an ascent to the summit. First step was to enlist the aid of competent guides, for the trails to the top of the Mountains of the Moon are fraught with perils for the uninitiated. It takes three weeks to a month to arrange the wealth of detail connected with a safari to the mountain peaks. Nothing can be left to chance. Hundreds of items are on the checklist. With no refrigeration, the supply of meat comes along on the hoof. Fifty porters, each with a 50-pound burden, carry everything from surveying instruments to iodine. trail up the mountain follows closely the route explored by Sir Henry Stanley of Dr. Livingston fame. The foothills are lush and verdant. As we climb, the green fades, giving away to great forests of bamboo. Though these mountains lie just north of the equator, it's noticeably cooler as we reach 9,000 feet. Time for rest and food, and the natives quickly turn to preparing posho, a staple of their diet. It's made of finely ground cassava root mixed with water, rolled into balls, 
and popped in the mouth that gives them the energy for a task like this. As we climb higher and higher, we find ourselves enveloped in thick clouds that perpetually cling to the peaks. It makes for slow, dangerous progress. The desolation of the region probably contributed to native fear of the mountains. And here is one of Africa's most intriguing paradoxes. Though the mountains of the moon straddle the equator, they are ice capped the year around. Though the temperature below may be over 100, here it is below freezing. Only for a few short noontime hours does it warm enough to feed melting snows to the rivers. Mount Stanley, the highest peak of the group, is nearly 17,000 feet, higher than the greatest Alp. Truly, this area of ice and snow is the very roof of Africa. Mountains of ice and mountains of fire. A scant hundred miles to the south, near Lake Kivu in the gorilla country of the Congo, lies the Kirunga chain of mountains. Two of them breathe fire as active volcanoes, and one, Nyam Legira, spread death and destruction in recent years when it erupted violently for months on end. trembles continuously as the volcano spews forth its 2,500 degree lava. In its last full-scale eruption, the mountain sent forth a river 100 feet wide that flowed for 16 miles through the forest, consuming everything in its path. Fascinating Africa, the land of extremes, a strange and lovely country that ever beckons the adventuresome.